and boom, we are live. Welcome, folks, to the American Movie Podcast. If you've never been here before, do not forget to subscribe. I go through movies, news, documentaries, and Netflix series and Netflix documentaries. So today we're going to go over a Netflix documentary called The Pharmacist. So this is a four-part series. It involves uh, a young man who gets killed in a shady drug deal. His his uh, name was Danny, and then a man, I believe it's Danny Sr., uh, tries to find out the killer and finds out that he was pretty much buying crack and he lived in a uh, dilapidated town or deteriorating town and he's trying to resolve all of this and then he also comes across it seems okay so then he comes across this pill mill and this horrible allegedly this is all according to the documentary uh this doctor that was selling drugs and i think she was convicted of one account of something like along those lines i'm not sure so check it out check it out in the documentary that they're talking about it and he then he starts to follow and notice um, all these opioid epidemics and these pill mills and people overdosing by opioids. So I looked at some of the comments on my previous video about this and some people did feel duped by this uh, documentary just because it seemed it seemed like they had one sort of really sad narrative where this guy was, he had a son, but it was a crack deal. And then he came across the opioid epidemic and I can see how people would feel that way when they watch this because it's four parts like four hours and then they totally it kind of catches track when they shift over to the opioid epidemic but it just kind of like it just seemed like they put a really really sad story right next to each other and I can see how people would feel duped but one of the best takeaways that I think you can do first I have no idea the experience of losing a son okay so you have no expectations this is your pride and joy like one of the most you can't fathom the love that you have this uh a father has for a son and you lose him in one of the worst ways possible and no one's helping you everybody says he deserved it he has um horrible run-ins and maltreatment with the authorities um according to the recordings and stuff like that and one thing he did that was really crazy is that he recorded almost every interaction that he had um post uh his son's death so he comes across this pharmacist doing shady stuff and it kind of is a nice thing to do. Like it's a nice message. Like you lose everything, the thing that you love most, and then you still try and seek and help others, um, not uh, experience the exact same thing that you did, losing a loved one. So one of the scariest things in the world is the opioid epidemic. There are 400,000 people murdered, or not murdered, but uh, overdosed and died. And then, um, I think after seven days, uh, you have a likelihood of being addicted to an opioid. I think it's one in 12. And then after 30 days, I think it's one in three, one in six, maybe. I think it's one in three though, after 30 days. So stay clear of the things because nobody tries to get addicted. Okay. That's basically the thing. And I think it overall, I can feel, I can see why people feel duped by this narrative, but I think the overarching message and the overarching thing of trying to help the community itself too is more powerful than it did seem like there were some uh, emotionally um, emotion, <coughs> excuse me, uh, manipulative stuff uh, via the audience. So like they had the sobbing, they had a sobbing uh, voicemail from one of the mo- or the mother of Danny and it goes on for about. I would say 45 seconds just too long and it just seemed like they were just trying to hook the audience into like this emotional state and then they also at the very end they had the man painting in his garage a an angel but it wasn't and he was like we're doing great aren't we Danny boy and it's like there was a spotlight right over him the lighting was perfect and they filmed it like that. It wasn't just him going about his business. It was like, we're going to get the lighting very good and we're going to end it on this. He's at his workbench, overhead light, looks, lighting looks really good. And it just seemed, and it like the back was dark. So it just seemed a little disingenuous. Um, But for the overarching goal of making it uh, human, I think it's, they probably validated it just to show like the emotional tax that this guy has paid and he overcame that tax <clears throat> and then tried to help his community and help everybody in the United States basically. And they go over Purdue Pharma, which was fined, I think $600 million. Uh, but that, 
And that seems like a lot, right? But they made $30 billion over the course of selling these opioids, Oxycontin, allegedly. Um, and then, so that's a 2% fine. Basically, and the Sacklers are one of the, the Sacklers own per, or were part of Purdue Pharma. I think they recently just filed for bankruptcy, or something like that, because they have to freeze all the accounts to pay um, all the legal fees, basically, and they're not sure how it's going to end up. All this stuff is according to the documentary, by the way, and uh, allegedly. But it just seemed um, I could see the the assumptions and the feeling of the comments of being duped and stuff like that too, because it did seem like that kind of, and it just kind of took a, a transition. It's like, okay, I get this guy's story and then we're going to put the story to a bigger problem. I get it. And he recognized one thing that I found crazy, which kind of solidifies it. Uh, he was talking about, I think it was in 2001, the opioid ep epidemic and these pill mills. So like he was one of the first people to recognize it, I believe. And I think it was one of the first, he found one of the first doctors uh, to be um, charged with stuff like this. So, I mean, it's four parts. Should you watch it? Uh, it's it's really sad, and it seemed a little bit of a manipulative thing, but I, for the overarching cause and just for art itself, um, it validates it for how many people are dying because of this, this non-lethal drug for non-lethal uh, prescriptions, basically, or non-lethal conditions. And it's sad, man. So it's it's sad. And I just don't know what to do besides some people want to decriminalize it because a lot of people are like high schoolers or whoever's hooked on it can't go seek help because it's illegal to take these drugs or they're hooked on heroin um, and they can't seek help because all of it's illegal because you're taking narcotics basically and their fear of being arrested. So that is one theory that people think would help it um, so people can actually get help and have like clean um, injection sites because that has been shown to help, I believe in Portland. And so it's an interesting show and it's still, it's, if you know about the opioid, opioid crisis, basically, then it's going to hit all the the high notes basically when um, that you've seen before, but it's a really incredible, sad story. And I do like the narrative where this man lost almost everything, his pride and joy, and then still tried to help people. I really like that. So check that out. That was the pharmacist from Netflix. It's a four part series. Basically, son dies from crack and then he redeems himself and pulls himself out of despair and tries to help his community. So it's cool. Check it out. Um, don't forget to subscribe. A lot of good stuff to come. Uh, until next time, this has been Matthew Benjamin with the American Movement Podcast. <gasps> bye, bye, bye. Bye, 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 bye.